In the name of the Father and Son and the Holy Spirit, amen. You all may be seated. A long time ago, longer than I care to admit, I was a counselor at St. George's Camp at Shrinemont. Now, St. George's is a unique camp because we celebrated each session, Christmas on one day and Easter on another day, to give kids a chance to experience the true meaning of these events outside of our normal cultural context. Christmas and Easter then at camp both ended with Eucharist. That was the big evening program, not a skit or a dance, but a Eucharist. And for Christmas, for the sermon, we would read a story by Martin Bell in his book, The Way of the Wolf. The story is called Barrington Bunny. And it's a rich and layered story but two major themes are gift and sacrifice. There was occasionally some debate among the counselors about whether this was really a Christmas story or an Easter story. But in truth, Easter is bound up in the story of incarnation, God existing outside of time steps into it on our behalf in the form of Jesus, holding the cosmic past and future and present within him. Well, (laughs) we didn't sing, but had we have sung this morning, this theology was in our opening hymn of the Father's love begotten, ere the worlds began to be, He is Alpha and Omega, He the source of ending, He of the things that are, that have been, and that future years shall see. You might hear these lines in the opening of our gospel today. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. Now the third verse of Hark the Herald really brings these two notions of incarnation and Easter together. Mild he lays his glory by, born that we no more may die, born born to raise us from the earth, born to give us second birth. Or as John puts it at the end of our reading today, the word became flesh and lived among us, and we have seen his glory. Remember, historically, Christmas and Easter have already happened as an event. So what we are doing here in the season, first of Advent and now Christmas, and later in Lent and Easter, is a holy remembering, a grafting ourselves onto the story and the life of God. Those who walked and lived with Jesus 2,000 years ago would not have known when they were following him about his death and resurrection and ascension until it happened. We, however, can greet the incarnate word in this Christmas season with full comfort and elation that it is true that Christ has, has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. As Paul writes in Galatians, we are then a child, and if a child, also an heir through God. But I mentioned this story about Barrington Bunny. Barrington lived in a large forest, and he was not a very handsome bunny. He had one lop ear, and he was a boring kind of brown. And as far as he knew, he was the only bunny in the forest. And winter was fun for Barrington because he could hop 
and make patterns in the snow, but it was also sad because he didn't have any family. He was the only bunny in the forest. And so on Christmas Eve, he didn't want to go home because it would make him feel sad. So he hopped and he hopped and he hopped, and eventually he had to go home. But while he was hopping, he thought to himself, bunnies can hop, and they're very furry and warm. Now on his way home, he passed some Christmas parties. The squirrels in the tree were having a Christmas party, and Barry came, Barrington came to the bottom of the tree, and he looked up and he said, hello, can I join your Christmas party? And the squirrel said, do you know how to climb trees? And Barrington said, no, I don't think so. And they said, well, I'm sorry, you can't come to our Christmas party. Later, Barrington passed some beavers and heard the racket outside of their nest, and he said, hello, may I come to your Christmas party? And the beaver said, well, can you swim? And Barrington said, no, I can't. And the beaver said, I'm sorry, you can't come to our Christmas party. The snow began to drive harder and harder, and Barrington heard a field mouse, a little squeak, squeak, and he searched and he found it and he said, no, <laughs> excuse me, he heard field mice having a party, and he screams out through, through the blinding, driving snow, hello, field mice, I am Barrington Bunny, can I please come to your Christmas party? And his voice was lost in the wind. And so Barrington was lost, and he sat down, and he began to cry and chew on his bunny's foot. Suddenly appeared next to him a large silver wolf, the most beautiful thing Barrington had ever seen. And the wolf said, why are you crying, Barrington? because it's Christmas Eve and I don't have any family. The wolf replied, all of the animals in the forest are your family. Bunnies aren't any good, Barrington said. Bunnies are too good, replied the wolf. Bunnies can hop and they're very furry and warm. And that is a gift, a free gift no strings attached. A gift, Barrington said, a free gift. All of the animals in the forest are my family. And he began to busy himself gathering leaves. And once he had gotten a big pile of leaves, he left it at the bottom of the tree with a note for the squirrels that said, I hope these leaves can make your nest warm. Love a member of your family. And then Barrington went and he gathered up some sticks and he brought it next to the beavers den with a note that said, I hope these sticks can make your, your den and home strong and warm. Love a member of your family. And now the blizzard was out of control and Barrington suddenly hears that little squeak squeak of a field mouse. Barrington says, come here field mouse, I'm furry and warm, I'll protect you. And so he puts himself on top of the small little field mouse. And Barrington had two thoughts that night. Bunnies can hop and they are furry and warm. And all of the animals in the forest are my family. Now the next day, the field mice found their little mouse safe and warm. But Barrington had given his life to keep the little mouse safe and warm. And the squirrels and the beavers all wondered on that Christmas morning which member of their family had brought them sticks and leaves. So what does this have to do with Jesus? Well, Jesus is our epistemology, our way of knowing. What we know about God and, what we, and about God's claim on our lives, we know from Jesus. Remember, as John says, we have seen his glory, the glory of as of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. The gift of God among us is the gift of truth among us. 
When people ask what it means to be a Christian, we can simply point to Jesus, who is the way. As John says, no one has ever seen God. It is God, the only Son, who is close to the Father's heart, who has made him known. The way of Jesus, the way of love, is about gift and sacrifice. It begins with Jesus as God's unending gift of love and truth to us. Because Jesus took on our flesh and showed us the nature of God, pure, sacrificial love, we find within ourselves the power and possibility of that same love the fullness of life and the strength to lay it down for another, God's heart beating inside of our own. Pure love, no strings attached. Barrington was rejected, sound familiar? But gave himself freely anyway, responding to the unconditional gifts around him, his own unique bunny gifts, and his belonging in the family of all of the animals in the forest. There's one last bit of the story. I'll share how it ends now. No one noticed the great silver wolf who came to stand beside Barrington. But the wolf did come, and he stood there without moving or saying a word, all Christmas Day until it was night, and then he disappeared into the forest. Amen.